All right, good afternoon. Um, this morning, as you may have seen, the Secretary General laid a wreath at a ceremony commemorating the 15th anniversary of the bombing of the UN headquarters in Baghdad, which took place on August 19th, 2003. He said that this was the first mass terror attack on the United Nations, and that before and since that day, United Nations staff have been targeted by those who would like to weaken us and make us afraid to do our jobs. He added that the best tribute was to continue our work, to go to dangerous places with the aim of making them safer, to stand with those who are suffering, is to bring them the relief they need. Later, the Secretary General opened the Surviving Terrorism Victims' Voices multimedia exhibit. This is part of the commemoration of the first International Day of Remembrance of and Tribute to the Victims of Terrorism, which actually falls on the 21st of August. The Secretary General said the victims of terrorism are some of the most important voices that, that we have in countering this global menace. Supporting victims and their families is a moral imperative based on promoting, protecting, and respecting their human rights. To support victims in a meaningful way is to prove that we care and to negate the terrorist narrative. The full, full text of those, both of those remarks have been made available to you. And as you may have seen on Yemen, our colleagues in Geneva this morning announced that the Office of the Special Envoy, Martin Griffiths, had issued invitations to the Geneva consultations to both the government of Yemen and to Ansarullah. Um, and that is scheduled for September 6th. Um, on Afghanistan, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that an estimated 200 to 250 civilian casualties have been reported following recent fighting in Ghazni. It added that parts of the water system are reportedly functioning, but our additional generator power is needed to ensure distribution. The immediate restoration of electricity is a top priority to ensure that the water supply flows. In support of government efforts, humanitarian partners remain on standby to scale up activities once safe and secure access is ensured both for aid workers and for people in need. Initial priorities include extraction of war wounded and the management of mortal remains, provisions of emergency health services, food and water. And just a quick update on the number of Ebola cases in uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The World Health Organization says as of yesterday, August 16th, there have been 78 cases of which 51 are confirmed and 27 are probable. 44 people have died in this latest outbreak. WHO adds that more, case, as, that more cases are expected, and it is not clear whether all the transmission chains have been identified, mainly because some of the zones being off limits to responders due to the security concerns uh, in the DRC. Two treatment centers are, however, now open, both in Mangina and another one in Beni. And also on the DRC, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the humanitarian situation in the country has now deteriorated sharply in recent months. Some 13 million people require humanitarian assistance and protection across the country, an increase of more than 50 percent from 2017. Around 4.5 million people are internally displaced, while food insecurity has reached record levels with 7.7 .7 million people, or 11 percent of the population, who are severely food insecure. The countrywide humanita humanitarian response plan for 2018, which requires $1.67 billion to respond to the needs of over 10 million people, is only 22 percent funded. And the heads of the UN food agencies, that's WFP, the FAO, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, known as EFAD, uh, today pledged the increased support for regional efforts addressing the critical food and nutrition security situation in the Sahel. They made the commitments as they wrapped up a four-day visit to Niger, where they visited several uh, projects in which three agencies collaborate with the government and other partners to provide people with new opportunities to feed their families and build livelihoods that are more resilient to extreme weather events and other shocks. Press release is online. Um, and we are Humanitarian colleagues, as well as a country team in India, have been following the recent floods uh, very closely. The United Nations is, of course, saddened by the loss of life, destruction, and displacement caused by the floods in India. Uh, our humanitarian friends tell us that it's been reported that this is the worst flood, f flooding Kerala in 100 years, 
where some 80 dams have been overflowed, more than 300 lives lost, and 200,000 people sheltering in relief camps. And the, uh, one of our, I want to give you an update on the humanitarian situation in Ukraine. After four years of armed conflict in eastern Ukraine, 4.4 million people are now affected by the crisis, of whom 3.4 million require humanitarian assistance and protection. This, uh, these vulnerable people include about one and a half million of internally displaced people who are in need of food, medicine, shelter, water education, and protection services. While finding durable solutions is urgently required for internally displaced people and their host communities, the UN and its partners are supporting the government of Ukraine in impl implementing an action plan. Senior personnel appointment uh, to announce today. The Secretary General is appointing Mariana uh, Spoljarek Egger of Switzerland as the Director of Regional Bureau of Europe and the Commonwealth of Independent States in the UN Development Program. Ms. Spoljarek Egger currently serves as the head of the UN and International Organizations Division of the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs. We welcome her, and there's a bio note available in my office. And today, uh, we welcome uh, Eswatini to the honor roll. Uh, with their full payment to the regular budget, uh, this brings our number up to 122. Very good. Uh, before I give you the floor, just a reminder that uh, we will not have briefings on Monday. On Tuesday, none of us will be here, I hope, as it's an official UN holiday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will be here, but we will not brief, uh, at least on camera. We'll be available to you. And starting Monday a week, we will return to the podium with pleasure. Ms. Letter. Um, a couple of follow-ups and then a question. Um, can you remind us what severely food insecure means? And also, has the um, UN been asked for help in India in the Kerala floods? And my question was, does the Secretary General have any reaction to today's um, election by parliament in Pakistan of Imran Khan? OK, uh, I'll try to unpack those questions. Um, as I was reading the severely food insecure, I was trying to remember the different scale. So I will. there is an exact scale, and I will get that to you as soon as possible. Um, on uh, India, we have not received uh, any direct request from the government uh, for aid. Uh, as you know, India has a quite a, a, um, a well-operated uh, machinery to deal with natural disasters. But of course, our country team, uh, I was in touch with our resident coordinator today. They're following closely, and they're in touch um, with, uh, with partners on the ground. Um, your other qu question about Pakistan, uh, obviously we've, we've taken uh, note of it. I think we, uh, we congratulate him on his uh, election by the parliament as the new prime minister. And the secretary general in the UN system looks forward to working uh, with Mr. Khan in his new capacity as prime minister of Pakistan. Yes, ma'am. Stefan, on Yemen, are there more invitations that will be put out? And Though, in particular, gentlemen, please, I, might Iran be invited? To uh, those are the invi those are the invitations I can report uh, at this time. If there are more coming, I will let you know. Ma Masood uh, Iftikhar, I, I ask you to speak when I give you the floor, with all due respect, because otherwise I can't hear what people are asking me. Go ahead. Thank you, Stefan. Um, today, Russian Foreign Ministry published um, a statement um, concerning the uh, protest note which uh, was sent to um, uh, United States uh, uh, about the diplomatic um, uh, diplomatic property. And uh, it was also mentioned that uh, the same message was uh, sent to Secretary General um, hoping for his attention to this matter. Um, do I will. Have I've, any I've checked right as uh, I, I've I checked with our uh, mail receipt service. I have yet to hear back from them. As soon as I'll, as soon as we have received it, I will let you know. Oh, but we have you. not. I, I can't confirm that we've received it as of yet. Yes, sir. 
I have two uh, questions on the Venezuela. First, mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, on the refugee crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, starting tomorrow, the authorities of Ecuador will require Venezuelan citizens to show their passports for them to allow the Venezuelan people to flow into their territory. And I remember a couple of days ago where we were talking actually uh, with Farhan about how for the ESG is very important for neighboring countries to keep an open mind and you know open doors to Venezuelans flowing there. So I wonder what's the view, what's the view of the Secretary General on the fact that authorities locally seem to be uh, taking additional steps maybe to curtail at some point the influx of, of Venezuelan uh, mi migrants. And the second question has to do with uh, the growing consensus on the need for an international commission to investigate what happened on August the 4th. The U.S. earlier today uh, you know, supported this idea. So I wonder if the U.N. has been reached on this at any level and if the SG will support mm -hmm. uh, this idea. Uh, I, I, I have no particular comment at this point on the, on the second part of your question. On the first part, we haven't seen the details of the, the new policy. Uh, countries, as a matter of principle, have a right and, and a responsibility to control their borders. Um, also, those seeking refuge uh, have a right under uh, international law uh, to certain things. Uh, people who are fleeing uh, violence, who are fleeing hunger, uh, have a right to refuge, and we hope that uh, people's uh, rights and refugees' rights are upheld throughout the world. Uh, follow yeah. it uh, qu uh, quickly. What if uh, this kind of idea creates some sort of a fallout in the region, and other nations take take you know steps uh, that are similar? I, I think we'll, we'll have. I, I don't want to comment comment on 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 what may happen. What what I do know is that, as I said, those who are fleeing hunger, those who are fleeing violence. Uh, have certain rights, and those rights should be respected. Masood. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, since there is a cut-off date on briefing, I'd like to know whether uh, just the Secretary General have any comment on on this uh, Gaza crossing today when like 10 Palestinians were injured in clashes with the Israelis today in, in the fences uh, in no, Gaza. I, I haven't seen those reports, but I will. Okay, look and it. also uh, about the killing of uh, one pregnant uh, Palestinian woman. Was there a statement given on that? I'll look, I haven't seen that particular report. I will look at it. Uh, yes, seen then, Ben. Thank you, Stefan. Um, do you have an agreement between Russia and America to get out, you know, militia of Iran? Do you and have anything about that from Syria? Uh, no, no particular comment. Ben? Yeah. Uh, do you have an update on the UNRWA figures of the non non payers but pledges? Uh, no, we're still trying to get some uh, updates from uh, from UNRWA. We saw that the uh, the Commissioner General, I think, took the the very important and courageous step about reopening the schools. Uh, I think that will add uh, pressure, so to speak, for donors to come up with the money uh, that has been pledged and new monies. The Secretary General. Uh, has also reached out to and will be reaching out to certain parties uh, to help the Commissioner General uh, get that money. It is important uh, that uh, those young people who have a right to access UNRWA schools not be left in the streets and have access to education. They can continue their education. Just, just a, another yeah. quick question. Uh, update on the inner city press investigation seems to be over a month now. Have you spoken uh, to as soon as, Press? Uh, Where are we? As decision is taken, Mr. Lee will be informed, and I'm sure the rest of you will be as well. Majid. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, with World Humanitarian Days approaching, so on Sunday, I wanted to ask, uh, can you get us at some numbers about the number of uh, uh, death and uh, victims of humanitarian workers? Sure. Will, um, uh, can you get us? I yes. will do that. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Nicaragua um, has been in turmoil for a couple of months, and um, yesterday uh, we have information that a mission from the OAS was sent to Nicaragua, and President Ortega didn't allow them to come into mm -hmm. the country, and they also have been um, outcry to um, make sure that the government provides information and documents about the debts and people that has been um, disappeared, there is missing in the country since the protests started in April of 2018. Um, is any reaction from the United Nations in terms of the 
uh, this type of missions been allowed to go inside the country? Is that, I understand that it's um, um, a sovereign country and they have that possibility. Sure. However, um, Ortega mentioned that they would like to include the United Nations within the negotiations in terms to try to get to a solution in its, his country. Um, does the United Nations have received any requests? We have not received any requests. Uh, you know, the Secretary General had expressed earlier, I think in, when he was in Costa Rica, the need to revitalize the national dialogue for all the parties to come together in a, in a, in a spirit of, uh, of reconciliation. Uh, we, as a matter of principle, always remain uh, available uh, should all the parties involved uh, require and ask for the Secretary General's participation. Yes, you had a question. Now. Okay, you? thank you. Uh, I have a question on the United Nations Human Rights Committee, which allowed Luis Inácio Lula da Silva to exercise his uh, full political rights as a candidate in October elections in Brazil. And I, I was curious if you have any information about that of uh, why did the UN decide this way? The <coughs> There was a... Uh, there was a request from the UN Human Rights Committee, which is uh, a body uh, made up of independent experts uh, that is based at Geneva. It is outside of the purview or the authority of the Secretary General. So we can give you the information, uh, and I'll share that what I have with you. Yeah, uh, Iftikhar. Uh, thank you, St Stefan. A follow-up to Edith's question on Imran Khan. Mm -hmm. uh, since the formal ceremony is taking place tomorrow, uh, will the United Nations be represented at the ceremony, uh, swearing in ceremony? Uh, I'll check. Am I often in these cases uh, the resident coordinator uh, attends if they are if they are invited uh, and right. they would be at that level. But I will uh, I will double check. Right. Dulce, I think you had your hand up. Thanks. Uh, so, ha have there been any developments in the Secretary uh, General? Masood, I, I, please, I can't hear Dulce. <laughs> Go ahead. Are there any developments in the Secretary General's call for an independent investigation on the attack on the school bus of children in Yemen? Uh, we understand that the, uh, they will, we would hope to see an independent investigation, but I have no update to give that I'm aware of to share with you right now. Carol. Stefan, on Cyprus, has Jane Hall Lute uh, reported to the Secretary General on her visit to, with parties in the Cyprus talks? Uh, I think she is continuing, uh, and she will at some point continue consultations with other parties uh, involved. I'm not aware there's been a formal report back to, uh, to the Secretary General at this point. Masood. Thank you, Stepan. On this uh, repatriation of the Rohingya refugees, has there been any progress on the situation on this agreement that was the, the the conditions on the ground are still not conducive to a uh, safe voluntary repatriation frank uh, just a house uh, housekeeping question or two first of all uh, what is the reason for the three day pause in, in briefings when, we tradition we usually uh, pause either the second to last or last week uh, last week in august um, so Decades old tradition. And since uh, next week is fairly light, as we have a holiday, we decide to do it next week. But we were, we'll be in the office. If you have any questions, we remain available. Have you heard anything further about what they're doing with the visiting press, whether they're going to bury them in the third basement or they're No, going to I think the Correspondents Association was informed uh, that the plan as of now is to uh, build a, put a tent uh, outside uh, to house the, uh, the hundreds and hundreds of. Uh, your colleagues that will be visiting during the General Assembly. On that note, I will add to, for all of you to remind your colleagues who are not uh, accredited that I think September 5th, if I'm not mistaken, is the cutoff date for accreditations for the General Assembly. Um, I would encourage all of you to make sure that everyone in your home offices who plans to come is fully accredited so you can come and enjoy the show. On that note, I wish you all a good weekend.